Okay. So what are we doing today? We are going to start a new topic. And usually students do pretty well with this. Um, you know, historically, this is something that students don't struggle with as much as they do with the logs and things like that. Um, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the bonus question, which had to do with interest. And then we'll move on to a new topic if we have some time. <clears throat> okay, so we had talked about simple interest. I think three people got the bonus right, maybe four. Simple interest. And I gave you two formulas. One of them was A equals P times 1 plus R over N raised to the N times T. And then the other formula I gave you was A equals P E to the RT. And I told you that this is, this is a, two equations that we use when we talk about interest. Um, for money in a bank or something like that, or a credit card. So there's a, there's a distinction between when you use this one and when you use this one. You'll use this one if within the problem they tell you that the interest is compounded and they'll, they'll give you something like daily or weekly or monthly, or quarterly. Those are the, the only ones I'll ever show you or present to you. So if, if they give you one of those, then this, these words dictate <clears throat> what this value of n is. So if it's daily, we'll use n is 365. If it's weekly, how many weeks in a year? Usually 52. Monthly, n will be 12, and quarterly, n will be 4. And then we use this formula if they tell us that the interest is compounded continuously. So interest compounded continuously. So that's the word you're looking for there. All right, so let's do an example. And I always like to do the, the, lottery, the lottery example. Like, what if, you <clears throat> what if you hit the lottery? All right, so let's say that uh, you win. How much do y'all want to win? How much? 1.7 million? OK. You win $1,700,000. That's after taxes or before taxes? After taxes. So that means? How much do they usually take out when you win the lottery? How much do they, does the government take from you? About half of it. About half of it. So we would have had to have won about, you know, 3.4 million. But hey, we're still happy, right? So we've got this money. And what we decide to do is just put it into the bank. All right? Let's just put this into the bank. And remember I told you, the banks, the way they work is they, they borrow money from people who have it, and then they lend that to people who don't, right? And then they charge a high interest rate for the people who borrow it, and they, they give a little bit of money to the people who they borrow it from, right? Does this all, I know it was like more than a week ago. Does this sound familiar? Yes? Okay. So you win $1.7 million, and you <clears throat> put it into... a savings account at an interest rate of 1.35%. That's not very high, but it's something, right? 1.35%. So here's the question. How much is there is in the account
after, let's just go with one year. If the interest is compounded, and now we're going to do several problems, okay? I'm going to have us do it for different scenarios. First, let's do it uh, uh, part A, let's do monthly. Part B, quarterly. And part C, continuously. All right, so that's, that's three different questions. All right, you ready to, ready to do it? <clears throat> okay, so let's do part A. So for part A, we're going to use this formula, right? Oh, by the way, I call this the shampoo formula. Have you all ever <clears throat> seen that shampoo, PERT? PERT Plus? It's good shampoo. Yeah. Yeah. So that's your shampoo formula, and this is the, the other one. All right? So we're going to use this one, right? We're using this one because it says monthly. Monthly is what tells us to use that formula. So we just need to identify the parts of this. Um, do we know what P is? Yeah, that's the amount we put in the beginning, right? We call that the principal. Okay, that's our starting money. So that's going to be 1.7 million. Do we know what R is? 1.35. Now, very important. When you put R in here into the formula, it must be a decimal. You cannot put 1.35. You have to put 0 .0135. So we have to convert that percentage to a decimal. N, what's N going to be? The number of times we compound it, right? Which we're saying monthly, so it's going to be 12. All right, and then this will be 12, and then T is going to be time measured in years, and how long are we leaving it in there? For one year, right? Quick question. If we were leaving the money in there for three years, would N change? No. Okay, so even though three years is 36 months, in the formula, N is always just the number of times it's compounded per year. It's, it's independent of the number of years you're leaving the money in there, all right? Okay, so I'm, and then A is the amount that'll be there, all right? So I'm going to write this down. A equals 1700000, parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.0135, divided by 12, raised to the 12 times 1. All right, and now we need our calculators. And I did not bring my other one. I had brought my fancy calculator. So when you're doing these problems, you know, I've always told you to like round two or three decimal places, right? I've always said that. With these problems, go as many decimals as your calculator shows you, all right? So I'm going to first start off order of operations. I'm going to do what's in parentheses first. I have addition and I have division. So I'm going to do the division first. So on my calculator, I'm going to do 0 0.0135. I'm going to divide that by 12. Were there any questions on where I got any of this? Yes? <coughs> Every time we use that formula, whatever our interest rate is, that has to be converted to a decimal. Every time. All right? If you put 1.35 in there, your answer is going to be way, way wrong. All right? Do you understand? I just moved the decimal point two places to the left. Okay. All right. So I do uh, this division, okay? And for this first problem, I'm going to show a lot of the detail here. I get 1700000, zero, 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 parentheses 1 plus. Now my calculator is saying uh, 0 0.00125. And that's going to be raised to the, I'm going to go ahead and do this 12 times 1 is 12. Now, again, order of operations, I'm going to add these two together, right? So add one to that, and that's always just going to give you, you know, that decimal with a one in front. Okay, what's the next, what's the next operation? Raise. raise it to the power of 12. We have to take this number and raise it to the 12. Do not multiply these together. Order of operations, exponents come before multiplication. So, um, did I hit record? Yeah, I did. I did, okay. So now I, on my calculator, I raise that to the 12th power. 
and I get this really nasty decimal, which I will put over here. So we have equals 1700000, and then times this number, 1.01358. Three eight four five. I'm going out as far as my calculator went. You go out as far as yours goes. All right? Did anyone's go less than that? Everyone got that? Okay. So now multiply that times that. <coughs> Which equals one seven two three. 092.5. Now here I'm going to round two decimal places because this is money, right? So we can only go to the cent. It doesn't make sense to go further. So we got that right there. That's how much money is in there. So how much money did you make by just having your money in the bank? $23,000. Right, $23,000. And if you were to divide that by 12, you know, that's almost two grand a month, almost $2,000 a month that you're making off of your money. Make sense? What's crazy about this, the way this works, <coughs> is that let's say you won, instead of 1.7 million, let's say it was 17 million. Now that would be a pretty big jackpot, right? 17 million? If you won 17 million and just put your money in a bank at 1% interest, which is pretty low, uh, well, it's high for a bank, but you could invest in the stock market or something like that and, and get a bigger return. Um, but let's just stick with the same example. If you won 17 million, how much would you make a year? 230,000. So you could just you could just put that money away, right, and live off the interest, right? Two hundred. It would be okay to make two hundred thirty thousand a year. Yeah, that would be okay. Some people still manage to go broke. That's right. So what people do, they win the lottery and then they go buy everything they wanted, right? Instead of using their money, using lending their money to banks, or putting it in the stock market, where you get stock market, you can get any, you know, anywhere from. 6% to 12% return, which would change this. But in the stock market, there's risk. You could lose your money, too. So um, yeah, you blow all your money, then you, you don't have anything to, to um, earn off of, right? So think about these people who are like billionaires, right? Imagine if you had, so 1.7 million, you make 200,000 a year. 17 million, you make 200,000 a year. 170 million, you make 2 million a year, right? If you're into the billions, you're making like tens of millions of dollars off of your money. That's pretty sick, right? To think of it that way. <laughs> so, all right. Now, let's do part B. So, in part B, what changes? Quarterly. Quarterly. So, I'll explain the difference between these two, but let's look at the numerical resor results. If I do part B, the only thing that changes in the formula is that that 12 becomes a 4, and that 12 right there becomes a 4. Do you think that that has a dramatic impact on the answer? Let's see, okay? Let's see what happens. So I've got to run through this computation again. Okay, so I do that number divided by 4. Add it to uh, 1. So now I'm getting 0 0.003375. Add them together, 1.003375. Raising it to the fourth power now instead of the 12th. Y'all following that? Any questions on that? 1.01356849 is what I get there. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twen
172 I round it a little bit there. So the last, the last answer, what did we get? I, I erased it, sorry. It was 1723. What was the last three here? Um, 3092. 3092. Two. Three. Three oh, oh, so 92 instead of 66. Mm -hmm. So that's like $30 or something difference. Not much, right? Not much of a difference. I mean, it's still 30 bucks, right? Like if you don't care about 30 bucks, then please just leave it on the table for me before you leave. <laughs> okay. It's still 30 bucks, but it's not that big of a difference, right? So what people, <clears throat> what people think is that if you compound the interest more frequently, that it's going to be a lot more money. But it's, that's not the way it works because they're not actually compounding it. They are compounding more frequently, but they're doing it on a smaller amount of the money. It's, it's, let's not get into it, all right? All I want you to see is that it doesn't make a drastic difference. Now, continuously means that they're compounding the interest like every moment every instant of every day, all the time, like as the clock runs, they're compounding the interest, which is something very confusing. But let's just run it through the formula and see what answer we get, all right? So for part C, we're gonna use, we're gonna use the shampoo formula, right? Now what's the advantage of the shampoo formula compared to this formula? What's the advantage, would you say? Or is there an advantage? Maybe we should do it first. A equals P, which is 1700000, and then E to the R.0135 times 1. Right, that's, that's plugging everything in. P is here. E is a special number on our calculator, a special thing on our calculator. R is the interest rate. T is time. So what I need to do first is multiply those two together, which is just the decimal, and then take E and raise it to that power. That's pretty easy to do on the calculator, right? Take E, raise it to the 0 .0135. So what I get here is 1700000. Did I do that right? Yeah, okay. Um, times 1.01359 one five three six so I'm getting one seven two three one zero oh five point six one what's the difference now yeah forty about forty bucks or so still not a huge difference right not a huge difference. The last three here, 105 versus 66, right? So it's not a huge difference. And that's compounding the interest all the time. Now, do you see how much easier, would you agree that this formula was easier to use? Just plug it in the calculator, right? Not, not a whole lot of room for mistakes. And this is, the, this is the formula that most banks and financial institutions will use because it's easier to work with, right? Now you may say, well, wait a minute, you know, if I'm paying a credit card, I don't want them compounding the interest continuously. Well, it's not gonna make a huge difference. I mean, this is $1.7 million. So if you're talking about like $5,000, we're talking pennies difference between these, these things, right? Okay, any questions on how to use that? Okay, let's do a different example. So as college students, sometimes finances are a little bit tight, and sometimes you have to take credit cards and use them. I don't recommend it, but you got to do what you got to do sometimes. So let's say you've, you've accumulated some debt, all right? How much do you want to owe? Don't say 1.7 million, because then I'll ask you to, well ask you what the hell you have for 1.7 million dollars but <laughs> okay so how much debt do y'all want to work with here 23,000 you're like 23,342 dollars and 17 <laughs> <laughs> okay so you have 
uh, $23,000 credit card debt. My best friend growing up. You know, back when I was in college, I don't know how it is these days, but um, back when I was in, in college, you'd walk around the university and they would just be giving credit cards away. I mean, like you could go up, they'd have different tables, and you could just go get a credit card. They'd give you like $5,000 credit, like just if you, if you could breathe, right? They would give you credit cards. And so my buddy got all these credit cards. He had like 60,000 in credit card debt by the time he finished college. And that's not like student loans or anything, that's just credit card debt. So he had to file for bankruptcy when he was like in his mid-20s. Yeah. He had the nicest clothes though. He always looked good. He had nice $50 haircuts. Anyway, okay, so <clears throat> um, let's say you have a credit card debt, all right? Now, what's the interest rate on a credit card? Oh, yeah, right. 8.25? <laughs> no way. Are you guessing or no? I think like 14's low. 14's low. I mean, it, 14 is good. 14 is good. I have, I have a credit. I, I have excellent credit. I'm not like being all. I have excellent, excellent credit. Like almost, almost peaked out to the top. Okay. Credit. I'm not going to get into a financial thing here. But credit is all about do you pay your bills on time? Right. Do you ever miss any payments? And me, historically, I have not. So because of that, my credit score is really high. And so I always get the, the best interest rates on anything because they look at you and they go, oh, this guy pays, right? So if they pay, that means we're gonna give them a low interest rate. If you, if you have bad credit, they may not even lend you money. And if they do, they're gonna be like, we're taking a risk with this person, so we're gonna give them a very high interest rate. So the best credit card that I could find for myself is 9%, okay, 9%. Now, I still don't, y'all know some credit cards, they, they give you like promotions where it's like, um, if you buy something, we'll give you like 12 months to pay it off at no interest. Y'all ever heard of that? I do that all the time. <laughs> because it's basically somebody lending me money for free. As long as you, I pay it off. So if you ever get that thing where it's like, look, I don't have to pay you know, interest for 12 months. The reason they do that is because most people won't do it. Like most people will be like, well, I don't have to pay, and then at the end they, they default, basically, and then all that interest for the whole year gets, gets calculated. So you get, you get kind of screwed at the end. Anyway, what I'm getting at is 10% would probably be the lowest you would ever find. I'm seeing credit cards, 14, 15s, you know, that's a good, a good rate, but for like most people, you're looking 18 to 26%. That's, that's pretty high, right? So let's go, let's just go with 18, all right? So let's say you've got this debt, all right? Now you're supposed to make minimum payments, aren't you? Like every month you're supposed to make a minimum payment. <clears throat> and those minimum payments really, if you look at them, I think most credit card statements nowadays have to show you like if you continue to make the minimum payment, here's how long it will take you to pay this off, and here's how much interest you'll wind up paying. Like some of those things like could take you like 20 years to pay it off. And then you wind up like paying this ridiculous amount. But let's just act just for the sake of simplicity that we've got this and that we are, we are not gonna make any payments for two years. I just wanna see how fast this money is gonna grow our debt's gonna grow in two years if we don't make much of a payment, minimum payment. All right, so um, how much is owed after two years? Assume continuous compounding. All right, so what formula are we using? Yep, 
the shampoo formula. You can say. I, I know we like shampoo. All right. So we're going to use this formula. Did that sign-in sheet get around to everyone? Yeah, right here? Okay. Thank you, Caroline. All right, so do we know P, the amount we started with, right? We know the interest rate, 18%, and T is two. So we're just gonna plug that in, 23, one, two, three, E to the 0.18 times two. So remember, you gotta get that 18% that converted to a decimal, right, 0.18. Go ahead and multiply 0.18 times 2 first, right? Do this multiplication first. And then you're going to take E and raise it to this power. So E raised to the 0.36. So we've got 23,000. 1.4333 And then we multiply those together. And then we go cry. So I'm going to see here, subtract that from 23,000. How much interest have you accumulated in those two years? How much interest is that? So take that total, subtract that. That's $9,966.58 or 57 cents. That's how much interest you've accumulated, right? Right? Yes? The decimal for 18% is if you move to the left twice. Yes, but it's 18 is right here, right? So it's 1, 2 that puts, you, puts it in front of the 1. Yeah, you wish it was 1.8%. That would be nice. That would be a nice credit card. Well, I get my calculator at 0.018. 0.0. 0. What do you mean you did it? It converts it? Or? No. Oh, yeah. And that's how we did it for the one Yeah, so, the, so yeah, it was 1.35%. So we moved it two places, which gave us a zero there. But here, because the decimals after the eight, two places puts it right in front of the one. You're good? Okay. So, I mean, just think about this for a second. I mean, this is, this is the sad reality here, right? Two years, this much money, is how much you've accumulated in interest. Remember, the bank's sitting there saying, people with money, can we, can we borrow it? People need money, here it is. But guess what? In two years, they're going to turn that money, if, as long as those people pay it back, they're going to owe this much, right? That's how much you're going to owe. So the, the bank's going to profit this. And then they turn around, they give that person maybe like $500, and they make all that money off of it, right? <clears throat> but it's not that easy, right? Because how many people make their payments, right? Some people don't. People file for bankruptcy. So, all right. Any questions? I remember there was some, some article that came out a few years ago talking about Americans and, you know, how, how many of us use credit cards and how many people rely on credit cards for, like, basic necessities, gas, food, right? Buying on credit and hoping, you know, later on I'll pay it off. And they were talking about how, like, if... if if you took the credit cards away, there would be like complete chaos, like complete chaos. So fight club. <laughs> yeah, like Fight Club, exactly. It would just turn in, turn into, yeah. 
okay. Um, so now we're going to kind of reformulate this whole concept a little bit and ask a different question. All right, so here's, here's the question. Um, let's say we, we come upon a little bit of money, maybe, you know, we inherited something, and we want to put it away, and we want to know if we put it into this particular CD, like how long it's going to take us to double our money. Okay? So let's say you invest, let's go with $5,000 into a 3.5% CD. Remember we talked about CDs a while back? Not compact discs. <laughs> Certificates of deposit. All right, so that's money that you're giving to the bank and you're promising them you're not coming back for it. Okay, not for a certain amount of time. So you invest $5,000 into a 3.5% CD. Um, yeah. How long will it take to double your money? Is 3.5% a good a high percentage for getting return on your money? Do you all have any idea of that? I mean, it's yeah, one, so I used 1.35 a minute ago, right, for a savings account. Mm -hmm. Savings accounts are more like 0.35%. It's not even one. It's, it's very, very low. So this is actually a pretty good, a pretty good rate, but the thing is you, you're going to have to lock your money up. You can't come back for it. Um, back in the early 90s, right, I know maybe some of you weren't even alive then, but um, in the early 90s, you could get that rate on a checking account. So like you could have money in a checking account earning 3%. It was crazy. Those, those good old days are over. It was good. I remember when I, was, when I married my wife, I would lived on my own for a while. I bought a house out 281 North, my, my first little house. And then I turned around and sold it three years later for almost twice as much as I bought it for. I mean, the value of the homes out there just went off, off the charts. So my wife and I wanted to build a house, so I took the money from the sale of my house, and I just put it in my checking account, and it earned 3%, more than 3%, for a year while we built our house. So I was able to like earn, I think it was like, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was almost, Hold on, that's too much. It was almost $30,000 in a year or something like that. Just in a checking account. You, you, can't, you can't even, you can't earn that. Oops, I'm sorry. Telemarketer. Um, you can't earn that much money unless you're willing to lock it up now. Okay, so things have changed dramatically in the last 20 years in terms of what you can and can't do with your money. All right, um, hmm. oh, let's assume compounded interest continuously, all right? Continuous compounding here. So what do you think? We have a formula here, right? Let's talk about what we know. Do we know this starting amount, P? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, we know P. Do we know the interest rate? Mm -hmm. Yes, do we know T? We don't know T, right? Aren't we asking how long will it take to double your money? This should be a question. We don't know T, right? Do we know A? Do we know the amount that we want at the end? Double what we started with, right? So this is the first time that we've had a problem like this where we, we, don't, we know A, we just don't know T, right? So let's just fill out this equation. The amount that we want at the end is double this, so that's 10,000. That must equal the amount we start with, 5,000, e to the interest rate, which is 0 0.035, right, Caroline? Right? Yes. Okay. So there you got the, the zero before, because you move it twice. That makes sense to everyone? 
Okay, now, on your exam, this is somewhat like problem 6b on your exam. We are solving an exponential equation. We are trying to solve for a variable that's up in an exponent. And that's why we did this, is so we could solve problems like this. Do you all see the similarity? Okay, so how do we solve these? Don't we have to use that, that like loop idea? We have to kind of use that, that idea of the loop. <clears throat> but before we can do that, we have to isolate this piece right here. We need to get that by itself. So how can I get that by itself? Divide, by divide both sides by 5,000. So if you divide this side by 5,000, it goes away. Divide this side by 5,000, you get 2, right? So you're going to get 2 equals e to the um, 0.035t. Okay, that's the first step. Now that we've got it isolated, let's think about how we could rewrite this using a log. So this will become log, what base, what base of this log? E, because this is the base, right? So we put E, and then equals. So remember, the idea here is that we're supposed to be able to do a loop that recreates that equation, right? So what, what goes, what should I put on this side? 0.035t, and then, so it's E raised to that power should equal what? Two. So there, this is the way we transform, we transform this exponential equation into a new equation by using the, the concept of this loop. Now, on this side, a lot of people on the test had trouble with this. What is that? Log base E of two. That's just natural log of two. Right? That's what the left side is. So the left side of this is just natural. Bless you. Thank you. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. So that's just natural log of two. Right? That's what the left side is. And so that we can do on our calculator, can't we? Let's do that. So I get point zero point. Six nine three one four seven one eight zero six huge number or lots of decimals zero point zero three five t now what divide both sides by this number right here nineteen point eight equals t. I'm rounding that just approximately. Oh man, that sucks. So what is that telling you? It's going to take you 20 years to double your money. Did we do that right? That seems terrible, doesn't it? it? Seems like when you owe money it like blows up real fast, but when you're trying to make money off your money it takes forever. It's going to take 20 years. Now, does that seem like a wise investment? I mean, in 20 years, what's $5,000 going to be worth in 20 years? Right? I mean, everything goes up, the price of everything goes up. So in 20 years, $5,000 is really going to be worth less than it is now. I mean, if inflation keeps doing its thing. But, but that's, the, that's the reality of it. It'll take 20 years. So not going to happen overnight, for sure. So the, the key to this problem is just to understand that, that this, in the previous problems, we were just plugging in to our calculator, nothing special. Here, we're actually, we were solving for t, right? OK, so here's another way I could phrase this question. Let's say we put $5,000 into a CD. Take this out. Let me do it in a different color. Okay, we, we put $5,000 into a CD. 
And the question I say is, um, if you want to double money, in five years, what am I going to ask? What's the interest rate? What interest rate would you need? Do you see how that question's different? We don't know what the interest rate is. What we're saying is, look, we got $5,000. I like to put it into something, and I want in five years to turn it into $10,000. What interest rate would I need for that to happen, right? So we're going to use the same shampoo formula, all right? Do we know the amount that we need to end with? 10,000, right? Double our money. Do we know the amount we start with? 5,000. E, do we know the interest rate? We do not know the interest rate. Do we know the amount of time? Five years. So I'm going to write this here as 5 times R. Okay? R times 5 is the same as 5 times R. We just normally put numbers in front of letters. So isn't this the same sort of idea? We're going to try and solve for r, but it's up here in the exponent. So we're going to have to do this loop thing. But first, we have to divide both sides by 10,000. I mean, so, sorry, by 5,000. So we divide, we get 2 equals e to the 5r. Then we use the loop again. Log base e equals 5r. So e to the 5r equals 2. And that's still natural log of 2. And so we'll do natural log of 2 on our calculator and divide by 5. So I'm going to do that all in one step here. Are there any questions on what I'm doing? I'm getting that r is equal to 0 0.1386. And it keeps going, but I'm going to stop there. So what is my, what is my interest rate need to be approximately? 13.8, 13 13.9%, almost 14. So I'm converting this decimal back into a percentage by moving the decimal point to the right. So we've got, so the, the likelihood that you're going to find somewhere to put your money to get 13 or almost 14% back, well, if you find it, let me know. So this is like stock market type stuff, where you can get returns like this. But again, stock market is high risk. Well, the higher risk, the more the reward. That's right. You know, that's, you've always heard that. In the stock market, if you go with something very risky, you can make a lot of money, but you can lose all your money too. So. OK. That's it, yeah? All right, I think you earned your three points. Why don't you all go have a good holiday? We'll, uh, we'll come back and we'll do, uh, we're going to do li systems of linear equations next, next week. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate you showing up. If you want to um, talk to me about your grades or tests or anything like that, I'll hang out. I'm not, I have another class after this, so 